Welcome back to Iron Fishing, where we pursue the best bites in fresh and salt water. That means every species, any water, and all tactics. Buckle up as we showcase trophy fish and reveal how you can get on them too. What's going on YouTube? Bill Rose, Mike Davidson, and this is Iron Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. So today, as you can see that white stuff on the ground over there, we're up in the northeast. It's that time of year again. I know I'm chomping at the bit, I'm sure you guys are too, to get out onto the ice. We always stress safety, so always make sure that the ice is there. You know, I don't want you guys, yep. Right here, sure guys, you have your picks on you. Absolutely. Um, that's a totally different topic for a video, but we'll mention it every video, especially coming in here, early ice, always think about your safety. I can't reiterate that enough. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you, you read about it all the time, there's accidents every year. Um, yep, Warwick, Warwick Mass, a car just went through the ice, a, a Tacoma with two women in it. They ended up being all right, but um, that's some stuff where you don't make it home to your family trying to catch a fish and no fish is worth that. So make sure you're calling the local fire department, just making sure the ice is safe. You know, and again, we'll, we'll get into that some other time, but today we wanted to talk about ice fishing rigs for some tip ups. We're gonna kind of start at the beginner stage of things, work our way into advanced. And you know, as you guys kind of watch, you can kind of follow along, see where you're at in fishing, see what speaks to you. Obviously you can take some of these ideas, run with it, make it your own, we encourage that. You know, we always want you guys thinking about what you guys can do differently, how you can improve our stuff. So, you know, let's get into it. Yeah, so basically I have, you know, two rigs, one for the beginner out there and then one for your more advanced guy. And I'll fish these typically on either your regular tip up, um, fold out tip up or your jaw jacker. I love the jaw jacker. We've had it for two or three seasons and I find I get a better hookup ratio with it. Um, but I'll, I'll speak, I'm gonna speak to your beginner first, okay? I have a beginner rig that I tied up. I think it's a great rig. I used it when I was a kid and it's something I use for a couple reasons, okay? But first off, the rig, okay? I don't know if you guys can see here. Um, you have a snap swivel split shot and a pre-tied leader uh, these are mustad pre-tied it's like a size two hook i want to say uh, this is your typical shiner rig for a tip up okay i like this because your hands freeze up out there especially for a beginner who doesn't really know their knots it's tough to tie your knots in that freezing cold you're gonna retie you're gonna tie a bad knot you're gonna lose a fish that's my mind okay maybe this is not as good for visibility fish seeing the line line shy fish but I, I think it will catch you more fish at the end of the day. If you're changing these out, you're more willing to change these pre-snout leaders out and get a fresh leader on there. So it's simple. All you have to do every time you want to change out your rig, you get snagged, your hook's not sharp. These are cheap enough and easy enough where you can snap these right on and you're good to go again. And for, you know, for the beginner, he can keep this tied up for a while on his ice fishing line. First off, you have Dacron or a wax line. I like wax line. This is Dacron. Wax line is going to shed water better. Um, it's going to shed that water off so your line's not going to freeze. Whereas Dacron will suck in a little more water and freeze up easier. But I've used both. I'm not particular either way. If I'm if I'm going with you know 15, 20 tip ups, wax line gets expensive. Mm -hmm. Do I think the benefits there? Sometimes I just use Dacron for the, for the cost effectiveness of it. But yeah, that's your beginner rig. So you just got a snelled leader, pre-snelled leaders. Here's the package of them. You got made by Mustad, okay? Pre-snelled leaders. And these are size one hooks. Uh, doesn't matter, one or a two is fine. Put your shiner on this. I have a soft plastic body here so I could kind of just show the beginner where to hook it. You're gonna see a fin on the shiner. You're gonna go probably about an eighth of an inch below that fin because you don't want to hit his spine or he's not going to move, okay? Hook him right behind that fin, just like that. Make sure you don't have a scale on the point of the hook. No scales right under that fin. Drop him down your hole. Your split shot's about uh, 18 inches back from that, and this would be your rig for the beginner. Yeah, and uh, one thing that Mike briefly touched on, this applies from people from beginner to advanced. 
you're gonna be out on that ice it's gonna be freezing cold guys grab some hand warmers don't cheap out on gloves make sure you have you know warm socks make sure you dress accordingly to how cold it's gonna be out there you know when we're up here in the northeast sometimes it can be below freezing you know we're out there for a whole day sometimes we'll go out for weekends make sure you're prepared guys you know it's 99 cents for hand warmers you know it's, it's a lifesaver it really is right and it's not only you know that's that's your comfort so you're going to be able to be out there you're going to be able to fish longer and also you're not going to you're not going to tie a knot too fast lose a fish you're going to be more comfortable to take your time and try new things and i think being more comfortable out there leads to you catching more fish absolutely and i you know i know you've been there i know i've been there you're out there you forget hand warmers or whatever you're trying to tie these knots and your hands just, they're not doing what your mind's trying to tell them to do. So, you know, again, I, I can't stress that enough, guys. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this is basic stuff, but I made the beginning of this video, I wanted to talk to that beginner. Now, I'll get into an advanced rig. This is something that I have had, me and Bill have had crazy yeah. success on. It's something different. It's something not a lot of guys I see doing. You know, most of your guys are out there and, and this is just a normal tip up rig. I'll rig it this way. But instead of doing a sneld, instead of doing a sneld leader, you tie your own leader, like a normal live bait rig. Same type of hook, right? Just a longer leader of whatever, you know, 15 pound floral, whatever, whatever your preference is. I won't get into that, but you know, a longer leader, maybe about three feet, split shot in the same spot, swivel to your line. That is a pretty typical rig. Um, and I feel like most guys already know that, so I'm not gonna get into that. But something I wanna get into is one of my favorite rigs, something with some flash, something to get those fish interested in, something that I think is gonna catch you more fish because it's different than what a lot of guys are gonna be doing out there on those lakes. Yeah, this is something you guys probably haven't even seen. You know, this is something we're thinking of even patenting. <laughs> so we're, so we're, gonna, we're gonna have you guys take a look at it, you know. Yeah, don't forget guys, tell us in the comments what you guys fish. Tell us, you know, if you would yeah. change anything about this. We're, we're totally. open to, you know. Totally, tell me. Open to anything. Tell us what you guys are doing. Tell me if yeah. you think something should be changed or you would do something a little different or whether you like what we're doing. Um, but this, this tip up is by Jack Traps, probably some of the best tip ups ever made in my opinion. Local, yeah. they're out of Maine, handmade. These will last you a lifetime, big round reel. I like that because the fish won't even feel. There's no resistance in me pulling this off right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna place this on the ground. I'm gonna go over this rig with you guys. Okay, so you got your ice, you got your ice line, whether it's Dacron or waxed line. I got a 80 pound barrel swivel by Spro. After that, for this video, I use 40 pound mono just so you could guys maybe could maybe catch it up on the camera. Maybe it would show up, maybe it wouldn't. I just wanted to have some visibility for it, okay? But normally, let's say we're lake trout fishing, okay? We're in whatever feet of water. You know, I'm usually in 60, 70 feet of water, but let's say we're lake trout fishing. I'm going 15 pound fluorocarbon for a lake trout, 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon where we're fishing. You might be up in the 20 pound, 25 pound range if you're up there on some of those trophy lakes. But the lake trout we catch around here, Bill, I, I'm I'm pretty confident it's 15 to 17 yeah. pound fluorocarbon. And kind of like what I was saying earlier, you know, all this stuff, this is what we do locally, you know, obviously adapt it to wherever you're fishing, right. your waterways, you know, if you would make changes, you know, maybe you have pike in the water, you want thicker lines. Right, this, like is a, this is a great, that's a good point yeah. Bill just made. This is a good predator rig overall. Yeah. I don't care whether it's a lake trout, a pike, a muskie, um, even bass. I yeah. mean, all fish do have some characteristics in common, and that being that some of them are, most of them are predator fish. The fish that we're going after, those, those sport fish, they're predator fish. So they're attracted to flash, they're attracted to vibration. Struggling and in the water, right. they see something, yeah. They're attracted to scared bait fish. Mm -hmm. So something that gives me a little extra flash, okay? I got two feet of mono tied off the backside of that um, spro swivel. I come up, this is the game changer for me. 
This is just a moose lick spoon, moose lick wobbler. You have tons of them. You got the Tommy gun. What I'm going for is a light spoon. I'm not going for a heavy jigging spoon. I'm going for a very light spoon. And you can see there, the moose lick wobbler is a very light spoon. Okay, it's a light trolling spoon. It's about two and a half inches long. You could go two and a half, two inches, three inches. It's all things you can play around with. I like, this is my preferred spoon to do this. Okay, you could play around with colors. You can play around with all those things. So, two feet of leader to the back side of a moose lick wobbler to a split ring right here. And then I'm gonna tie on another two feet of your leader material, okay? Then I put a bead on here. So I have spoon, bead, I have a sliding bead. I just put it through. This is gonna do, it's gonna knock, okay? It's gonna knock like this. I put another bead, which I tied on, okay? So I, sometimes I'll fish another bead here, it just depends. But normally I'm one bead and they're, they're larger beads, like I said, you know, though you can play around with all these things. You can play around with size of beads, colors of beads, glow beads. There's so much to do, but this is the bare bones of what I'm doing and I've had great success with. Okay, so on to this. Same same hook, a bait holder hook. You can use a gamagatsu, whatever you want. These are mustads. I like them sharp, cheap, um, and they are a bait holder, so they'll hold that minnow on there. I'd put it, like I said, this is the basics of this rig. You I mean, we've gotten crazy with these rigs, guys. Right. Like, you, you can, can get out of control with this stuff. Right. You can, do a, you can do a six inch sucker. You can do a small, if you're going for brookies, you could do the same rig, but with, you know, your smaller shiner. But let's just say we're going to put a four inch shiner on here, a four inch, four to five inch sucker, small sucker for a lake trout. What's going to happen? Just think about this. This fish is swimming. Instead of just having a split shot there, now we have a bead and a spoon. So it's doing this in the water. You got a spoon here. So it's almost looking like a school to that fish. And he's gonna see that from further away. And I think, I don't think, I know it gets you more bites. I fished this side by side with guys who were running just your typical rig. It set us apart and it put more fish on the ice for us last year. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. You got a spoon. So all you do is through, through tie that spoon on to each side of your spoon, take your hook off of it, okay? All it is is a flasher. And the shiner swimming, right? And, and kind of what you get in the water is these beads dangling. You got a knocker bead, it's making noise. It's making noise every time it knocks, okay? And then you have a spoon here dangling and then you got your minnow up here. And a lot of times I don't use weight on this because the spoon is my weight. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a rig we've had great success on. And that's more your advanced rig. And like I said, you can put this on tip ups. You can put this on your jaw jacker. Jaw jacker's great. I find I get less gut hooks. Definitely check your local regulations though. Not allowed in every single state. Banned in even some countries, I believe. <laughs> but yeah, you know, in our opinion, much better for the fish. It's an automatic hook set. You know, you don't have to worry about the fish swallowing the hook. You know, it's right there. Fish is already on. You come up, grab the rod out. You're already, yeah, you know, and now you're, 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 now you're, you're fighting a fish on a rod yeah, too, absolutely. which which is a little more forgiving. I like to fish, fight a fish on a rod as opposed to hand, but I, I still love, I love it all. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. I love it on a tip baby. up. <laughs> I love it. I love it fighting it on a reel. Oh, one other thing. Um, so we don't have one of them here, but there's another version of tip up. It's it's more of a circle shape. You know, the flags on the top, the reel is gonna be down on the bottom. It works pretty much the exact same way as your conventional tip up. The only difference is I like it because it covers the hole, covers the ice, there's no sunlight shining down, which obviously is gonna be unnatural. Some fish like that, some fish don't. You know, it depends on the mood they're in and all that stuff. Um, I find with brook trout, any kind of trout specifically, when you're up in those shallow waters, yep. prevent that light from coming through. 100%. Um, you know, the, also, you're not gonna have to worry about that. Because when this sits in the water, you know, this is down, what, a good foot and a half? Yeah, I'd say about close foot to a half. foot and a half. And you know, if you only have three inches, four inches of ice, you know, you're sitting down over a foot underneath the water. Right, so let's say we're fishing brook trout in four yeah. feet of water. Sometimes now, we're, sometimes now we have we're a reel less right there. Feet. Sometimes so, we're in two, three feet. Exactly, and, th and that's when those round tip-ups, they have, 
they come round. They're a little harder to pack away in a pack basket or something. I know Frable makes them. Frable uh, does Frable make them. HT uh, Enterprises yep. makes them. A couple companies make them. They're kind of the, the same design as the iFish Pro tip up. They're the same roundness. They're not the same design. They're a normal tip up design with a with a reel. Um, they don't fish a rod like the iFish Pro does. But like like Bill said. You know, that blocks out light. That's a small tip, but a great tip. It, all, it blocks out light and it keeps your hole from icing up because yeah. there's a little insulation there. It keeps keeps it warmer and that is that is a great tip. I, I love that. Yeah, and I mean, for some fish, you don't have to worry about it when you're going for lake trout in 50 to, you know, sometimes 100 feet of water, sometimes, sometimes more. Um, you don't have to worry about that as much. Sunlight can barely get down there anyways. They're not gonna be seeing that. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. But definitely in shallower waters, certain types of fish that are a little bit more finicky. Yeah, absolutely. So those are two rigs that I wanted to talk about. We're getting jazzed up. We're getting excited here. We're ready to hit the ice and I'm sure you guys are too. I wanted to share that because I know you guys are out there. You're, you're tying up your tip ups. You're getting ready. You're looking at tactics. You're, you're trying to hone in your ice fishing game. Same with us. I won't bat one too much longer. I hope you guys have a great season. And um, we'll, we'll be bringing you more and more content as we go on here. Yeah, absolutely. Let us, you know, like we were saying earlier, guys, let us know in the comments if you guys have any tips, if you want to see any videos. You know, we've been fishing most of our lives, so we got plenty of information we want to share with you guys. Um, and I'm sure you guys have something you can share with us. So, you know, like and subscribe, guys. Yep, down see below. Next time. Like and subscribe, baby. Yep. Thanks. Till next Iron time. Iron fishing out. Iron fishing out, baby. <laughs>